This is Science for Success, the best soybean management practices by Extension researchers from across the United States. Hello, I'm uh, Seth Nave. I'm Extension Soybean Agronomist at the University of Minnesota. Uh, today we are talking about soybean populations and soybean population management. Uh, the reality of soybean um, research on populations is that soybean has a very broad range of optimizing uh, yields uh, across a broad range of populations. At suboptimal populations, soybeans puts on extra branches. Those support extra leaves and extra pods. And those soybeans really occupy a large part of, of the field, uh, produce a nice canopy, uh, and will collect the light and then convert that into, into energy that it can utilize to produce the seed. On the other hand, there's not a large penalty for extra high seeding rates, for super optimal seeding rates. Soybean plants respond very well to very high seeding rates as well. They self-thin through the year, and this is a very important factor. Uh, if we plant too high of soybean stands, uh, extra seed, we tend to lose a lot of those plants over time and they don't tend to be very weedy with each other. So we don't have a lot of net loss uh, from extra, extra plants. The factor that really affects the yield response in soybean is not the seeding rate, uh, not even that early emergence uh, planting population. The reality is the, the important number is really the number of plants we have at or near harvest time. So how do we achieve that type, that stand that's required to support a high yield uh, towards the end of the season. We, what we really have to do as producers is work that backwards. It's important to subtract off uh, those seeds that we would consider non-viable or those that we wouldn't expect to emerge in the spring. So whether that number is 90 or 85 or 95 percent, we need to compensate for that uh, number as we plant in the spring. Then there'll be another five or 10% of those viable seeds that actually won't emerge in the spring. So we have to add another five or 10% onto our population in order to maximize um, uh, yields and stands early in the season. And lastly, we have to make sure we get those all the way out to harvest. So it's important for farmers to back calculate and make sure they have enough seed in the hopper to ensure that they have a proper stand to make it all the way through harvest. The soybean economic response curve is, is really quite flat because the yield response curve is flat but slightly tipped up, meaning that as we plant higher and higher seeding rates, we tend not to have uh, negative yield effects and as we plant higher and higher seeding rates, we have that extra insurance that we have enough seeds per acre to maximize yields. On the other hand, it's costing us extra seed uh, in the spring, which comes with an economic burden on the farmer. Therefore, the economic response curve for soybean seeding rate is very flat. I just want to caution farmers not to pull back too much, uh, because the most important thing that farmers can do is establish a healthy uh, soybean crop in the spring and get that vigorous crop growing early and capture as much light as they can. Farmers can't afford to replant a soybean crop due to a planting problem. Therefore, they have to have enough seed out there to ensure that they can maximize or near maximize uh, production on every acre. Therefore, in the north, we're recommending farmers uh, plant between 125 and 175,000 plants per acre on, on most situations, and slightly lower numbers when we go to the southern U.S. Science for Success is funded by the Soybean Checkoff.